Hello, Courier Nation. Welcome to the Deliver on Your Business podcast, where you are the boss. Each week, we talk about how to make the most of your business as an independent contractor, as a courier delivering for gig economy apps like Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, and so many others. Well, welcome back, Courier Nation, and welcome to the first meeting of the Entree Courier Book Club. Okay, there is no Entree Courier Book Club. Maybe there should be, I don't know. But today we're going to talk about uh, some audiobooks that I think would be very useful for delivery drivers. You want to know one of the biggest surprises that I've found with this whole delivery thing is time. Now, when I ventured into this, I thought that uh, this delivery could be a good way to make some money, and I liked having the flexibility. Now, last week, I talked a little bit about some of the things that got me into doing this delivery, and I talked a lot about my why, and I liked having the flexibility that doing this delivery gave me to approach those things. But the thing about it was that as I got started, I looked at time as being something that you kind of that I did in blocks. It was very finite. I had my drive time, you know, the delivery time. Then I had time to work on the passion projects that I'm working on. There's time for family. And then if I need to learn about something, well, you know, that's time that I had to make. And there there have been a lot of times that I really wondered how I could really do all of this. But the beautiful thing that I've discovered since starting this whole delivery thing is that time can be so much more fluid. It's it's so beautiful, it's so magical in a lot of ways. And and you know, we often illustrate time as that hourglass with the sand. And, and there's something there's something to that because of the way that the sand can kind of fill in around everything. So it, it becomes maybe a little more meaningful when I started seeing a lot of these things. Now, when I started this website, actually, I started it more than a year ago, and I posted a number of things, and it was fun. And I thought, okay, there could be some helpful stuff. But it was taking up a lot of time, and I stopped. Here's the deal is, I quit my last job, mainly because I wanted to move into something that gave me flexibility to work on these things that I'm passionate about. And I started getting worried that my time that I was putting into the website was taking away. I actually deleted a lot of this stuff. Then I started it again back in February or so, but it wasn't really until I got and probably June that I started to get really serious about it. But the thing about it is, I just, I didn't want the entree career to be something that was going to distract me from the things that I wanted to do. And I stopped because I didn't have time. Well, here's the thing, though, about delivery. And this is this is where I'm going with this whole time being a lot more fluid than we give it credit. You know how it is with delivery that, you know, you get that offer, you drive to the restaurant and you get that food. Well, now you take it to the customer and there's more time that you're driving. And when I thought of it as this was kind of time that was blocked off for delivery, I think that's where I was really starting to limit myself. And, and, and at the same time, I think I was starting to run into where it was starting to kind of feel like a little bit of a grind at times, you know, and, and it got to be about filling the time. It got to be about, you know, I listened to the radio a lot. Um, I started streaming my music on uh, Spotify when the radio was getting old. And I got to tell you what, folks, I used, I started learning very quickly how extremely limited my playlist on Spotify is. It got old too. And, uh, I don't give uh, radio stations as much grief for their limited playlists anymore because it sounded even worse on Spotify than I think it ever has on a radio station. I'm not sure when the light really started coming through though, about this time that I'm delivering. I think there were a lot of things about it, but the time came when all of a sudden everything changed. I couldn't point to one time, but all of a sudden I got to where, you know what? The drive time was no longer a chore because it became time that I could do a lot of these other things that I wanted to do. I started realizing that there was something kind of powerful and magic about that time that I had when I was driving, because now I could, I started seeing it as something that I could use for all the other things. And I don't know which one came first, you know, whether it was the uh, chicken or the egg, the podcast or the audio book, but it got to where instead of killing time while driving to the restaurant or the customer, 
I started getting to where I was learning and developing and growing. And honestly, I got to say, there's times when I've taken the day off that I kind of wish I was out there driving because it was such a great time. It is such a great time for, I, I look forward to it so many times because I get to listen to, you know, whatever book I'm on or whatever the next is up on, you know, some of my favorite podcasts. And folks, Courier Nation, I can't encourage you enough. Take advantage of that time that you get when you're driving. Folks, there's there's a world of opportunity out there in those minutes that you're heading to the restaurant or minutes that you're heading to the customer. Now, I talk a lot about focusing on and finding your why. And here's the thing is I'm finding is that you've got so much time that you can listen to. It seems like an almost infinite world of resources that can help you with that whole now what. You know, what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? How do you get there? Guys, there's a podcast for that. There's a book for that. And and my world has blown up since I started taking advantage of that time and getting really intentional about using that time. And it's it's gotten to a point where it has gone beyond just listening to books and podcasts. It has grown into time when I can strategize, when I can start planning, when I can start kind of drafting some of the things that I want to say in the podcast or the uh, the website. And it's gotten to a point where you know, I've been asked a number of times things like, you know, what do I think about doing rideshare? Would I ever consider doing Uber or Lyft? And I wrote an article about it earlier this week, but I kind of figured out that in the end, I don't think those things appeal to me as much. And and one of the main reasons is I'm selfish about that time now. And it's part of this time is why this delivery gig is such a great fit for me because, folks, I'm getting paid by Grubhub and DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats. You know, I'm getting paid by all the customers that are tipping me. I'm getting paid by all of them to be able to learn and to grow. I'm getting all that time that is paid for by somebody else. And and I'm afraid that if I did rideshare, I, I would lose that. I'd have to turn that stuff off too many times. And so I'm I'm getting very jealous about guarding that time and and loving that time. And and that's why I it really has me thinking about this whole topic today. This is why I want to share that because you can do that. You can use that time. And guys, it is such a tremendous gift. And I really encourage you to think about that. And when I got serious about this website, you know, back in June, July, that's when I started uh, posting much more regularly. And when I started making commitments to some different things, and I had no clue how to do more than just write. I've done blogs before. I've done stuff like that. But I really didn't know where to go beyond just the writing. Well, podcasts and audiobooks, they've helped me with that. And when I started thinking about the things that I wanted to do in in kind of my areas of passion outside of this delivery, the stuff that I'm doing this delivery to support, uh, you know, it's my why for doing this delivery. I had no idea where to take some of that. And because of the podcast and the audio books, those have helped me get there. And then when I decided to start this podcast, oh my gosh, how do you do a podcast, right? I mean, you know, where do you start? Where do you, where do you find the equipment that you need? Where do you, how do you put it together? How do you get it up there? Well, guess what? Podcasts and audio books, folks. And the question becomes, what do you want to know? What do you want to know about how to do something with your career? There's an audio book for that. And there's a podcast for that. Take advantage of the time. Use the time that you got because my gosh, I, I, that, that's one of the things that has just blown me away about this delivery thing is time and what I could do with that time. I've I've been trying to do more with social media around this and and there were times I started and it was kind of like, no, that's sucking up the time. And then I realized I can do that in some of my time that I'm out there. And you know, that, that, that's where all of a sudden I don't mind waiting at the restaurant as much nowadays. (laughs) It's just things like that. But What I want to do today is, you know, one, just encourage you to use that time. And now I'm tempted to get into, you know, both podcasts and audio books that have been helpful for me, but my gosh, that's going to make this a really long episode. So I'm just going to focus on the audio books today. 
And we'll talk about some of those audiobooks that have made a difference for me while delivering for Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, all of those. And, you know, I don't know that they necessarily relate to doing those things, but they've made a huge difference for me. And I'm hoping that they are things that can help you. And that's why I want to share them. So let's talk a little bit about audiobooks. Now, before I get into the books themselves, let's talk about just actually sourcing and getting those audiobooks. Now, you're probably already familiar with Audible. That's that's the king, right? That's that's the king of the hill. That's where most people get it. And I it has been a fantastic thing for me. The subscription to Audible has been some of the best money I've ever spent, I got to tell you. And now most people think of Audible as the main source, but there are other places as well. Now I'll put a link in the show notes there. There was an article that I found that kind of gave a list of a lot of different audiobook options, some that I never thought about. And so if you're not a real fan of Audible, you might look into some of those. Now, one thing I will tell you is that Audible has a heck of a lot more than anybody else available. And you'll also find that there's, because part of the reason that Audible has so many things is you also have a lot of people that self-produce. And some people that self-produce their books do a fantastic job. Um, Pat Flynn is one that comes to mind. Uh, you got a lot of others that, uh, you know, they, they produce it as well as they write it, and that's not very good. So you get a little bit of both. But um, here's the thing is when it comes to listening – you know, how do you listen? Uh, like you can dig into some of those options. I'll talk a little bit more about Audible and Amazon and, and some of those things in a moment. When it comes to listening, you know, obviously the big thing is, and this is one of the things that makes this delivery thing beautiful for that, because you've already got your phone with you. You've got to have a smartphone to do this delivery, right? Well, you know, with your smartphone, you can you can get all sorts of different podcast options. I've got like three different apps downloaded just in case, you know, one's not pulling it down for whatever reason, I can pull it up on one of the others. That's overkill. But, um, you know, play, you can play it then over the speaker of your phone. The ideal is, is if you got an audio system, I want to call it a stereo that dates me, you know, that, that tells you how old I am. Most people don't call it a stereo anymore, but, uh, you know, the audio system in your car, you can, you can connect that to your phone. If you've got that, that's the way to go. I actually got a, uh, um, an Android compatible stereo installed in my 20 year old Buick. I'm probably the only 20 year old Buick that's got Android auto for all I know. But, uh, and, and a lot of that is because of being, having some of that capability that I can just uh, connect my phone by Bluetooth and just play it over the speakers of my car. You could go old school with your headphones, you know, just whatever works, but th there are some great options for being able to listen. Now, I'm going to put some links in the show notes, both for the services and for the particular books that I want to talk about. And, and that just gives you an easy way to get there. Now, I'm going to be up front. These are affiliate links. And what that means is that if you do make a purchase off of those links, I do receive a little bit of a commission. It's kind of like a finder's fee, you know, for uh, pointing you in that point in that direction. Now, you can go just directly and search for those things. I'm not going to put any obligation. And if you do that, I'm cool with that. But, you know, if you do go through those links, basically what it does is just help support this website. It's just a, a little way that I put up to cover. I, I've been running this site for a while and it does have some costs to it. And I'd like to find ways to help kind of cover those costs. So that's kind of what goes on with that. So I did want to let you know that, uh, that I do get paid for some of those links. And so, but here's the thing is you got a couple of options for getting your your services. Uh, you can go to the link in the article. Now that one is not an affiliate link or anything. It's just, uh, uh, there's, there's an article there from uh, tech radar that talks about some of the different audio book options. You can go with subscription services and the two most prominent ones, they're actually both owned by Amazon, but it's basically, it's like two different ways that you can go. Now there's audible. That's the one everybody knows, right? The King of the mountain. And the biggest thing I think with Audible is is that it's more like it is a subscription where you own the audiobooks when you're done. And then there's a Amazon, uh, they've got Kindle Unlimited, and that's kind of more like a rental service for them. Yeah. And so the idea is with Audible, for $14.99 a month, you get a credit for a book every month. And uh, I've actually kind of enjoyed... There, there are times that I've downloaded uh, every month, they give you like a couple of uh, Audible originals. 
that they do that they don't charge any extra for. And, and some of them have been pretty interesting. But for, for that, you get, uh, you know, these free downloads, you know, at least one free book of your choice. And then you have a smaller selection of some free ones that you can get. And then the thing is, is that Audible has a one month free trial. Now, here's the thing with Audible is you can purchase the books individually without a membership. I mean, a lot of people probably don't realize, I actually didn't realize that, but, um, you know, the main reason that I stick with the uh, membership is that a lot of the books that I get probably cost more if I buy them individually than what the membership does. So that's kind of the way that I go. But they do have, if you want to try them out, they've got a one month free trial. And basically what that means, and, and you get the you get the free download with that and everything, or you get the free book. And so essentially that means your first book with Audible is free. So if there's any of these books that you're thinking about and you're not on Audible yet, you can get the trial membership. You can download that book for free. And then if you decide you're not going to go with it anymore, just make sure you cancel that membership before your first month is up and and you're good to go. Now, the other one was uh, it's uh, uh, Kindle Unlimited. And I think this is fairly new that they started offering the option to listen. And you can listen to this vast Audible library. Now, what they do is it's it's more like a borrow or a library type subscription. It's I think it's $9.99 a month. And the main difference is it's kind of like you're renting or borrowing the books. Now, with Audible, you can end your subscription. But, you know, if you've got your books downloaded, you own those books. And they're yours. And uh, but with with the uh, Kindle Unlimited, what it is, whether it's Kindle books or the Audible books that you can just get whatever you're doing. But it's kind of like you're borrowing them. You've got to turn them back in. You can only have so many downloaded at a time. And uh, if you end your subscription, you lose your access to those books. It just kind of depends on how important those particular books are that you have long term. But maybe if you're listening to a lot and you don't think you're going to go back to them, the Kindle Unlimited might be the better option. And I know a lot of people that actually do both. But uh, Kindle Unlimited also has a one month free trial. So you could actually try out both methods and see what works for you. And and they also have a thing where you can get a three-month trial for 99 cents. And I'm sure that that's really trying to hook you in, you know, get you used to using it. But those are some of your options that you've got. You can also, like I mentioned, you can also purchase books individually. You might just find something, you decide you want to go ahead and have that and download it. So you can purchase it individually from Audible. But you can also get it from other places too. Audible's not the only place you can do it. Uh, the Apple... Um, I'm not sure exactly where in Apple it is now, whether it's iTunes or uh, whatever you know version of iTunes it is now in their bookstore. You can download a lot of audiobooks there, and Google Play has introduced audiobooks as well. Now their selection's not nearly as large as as uh, Amazon's, but for like the major books and different things like that, you're going to be able to get those. So anyway, that's enough about the services and how you can listen. Let's talk about those seven books. Uh, I want to dive into those. These are books that they're not specifically necessarily about delivering for Grubhub or DoorDash or any of the others. And they're really not even being about independent contractors. They are more about kind of developing the kind of person who could be successful in this environment. I don't know that they're even necessarily the seven best books. In fact, I'm sure they're not because there's a couple of them that, you know, it's like, oh, should I put this in the list or not? So and there, I know that there are a lot of books that I've never listened to that are probably better, but they are books that have helped me and I really hope they can help you. And that's why I want to uh, kind of suggest these for you. The first one that I would do, if if I had to choose only one book, I think this might be the one. Uh, it is uh, by Stephen Covey, uh, C-O-V-E-Y. It's called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And like I said, I think it this might be the one that I would do. We've got a tendency, I know I have at times, to just exist, to just do. You know, you go out, you deliver, and uh, you take the stuff that have come along, and you go about your life, and you just, you do stuff. And sometimes you just feel like you're never getting anywhere. And this book has really helped me be a lot more intentional about my outlook. It's helped me to really think about how I see things. It's helped me to take responsibility that, that, and, and, and I think to kind of help realize that 
I've got control over where I go. And, and this is why I think this is just a really good book. If you've never read it or listened to it, this is a good one to start with. It really helps get you into the mindset of somebody who's taking control. And, and in the end, I think also, you know, it started off with some of those things about kind of how I take control and prioritizing the things that are important to me. Uh, maybe in some ways, maybe got me started thinking about my why even before I'd ever heard it put into terms about your why. We'll get into that in a little bit because there's another book there. But the other thing is that it's done is help me kind of focus on how I can build my interactions with other people in a way that really makes a difference. Now, the last habit in the book is about finding ways that you can continue to improve and develop yourself. And so that probably makes a good lead into talking about other books. The second book that I want to suggest is this is kind of a short one. Uh, he's got some other stuff that uh, probably a little bit longer, but uh, the book is called Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey. Now, if you're going to be an independent contractor, and this isn't really written towards business people or independent contractors, but but the deal about it is if you're going to be an independent contractor and and if that independent contractor work is a significant portion of your income, if you're going to stay out of trouble because of all of that, you've got to be good with your money. You've got to be in control of your money instead of letting it control you. I came across Dave Ramsey years ago on the radio, and it's just kind of like, oh man, he was hitting me between the eyes with some of the things that he was saying. And uh, I didn't like him for some of what he was saying, but he was right. And so his book, Financial Peace, is just kind of an outline of his, his general philosophy around how to treat your money and how to take control of your money. Like I said, it's not really about business, but it's about your personal use of money. And if you're going to be a business owner, which we are, and if you're going to be really good at it, you've got to control your money. There's a lot of principles that I found really helpful. And if you can get into a mindset of how you're going to take care of every dollar, you're going to be intentional with every dollar that you use, I think you're in a better position to set aside that money that you need for taking care of your vehicle and your taxes. You're in a better position to avoid getting in trouble. And whether you're a contractor or an employee, I just, I can't recommend this book enough. Dave's got some very strong opinions about money. But essentially, he's been saying the same thing over and over for literally decades now between his radio show and his podcast and his books. But you know something? That's because I think they need to be said over and over. The next book that I want to recommend is it's a book that's uh, called It's Start With Why by Simon Sinek. S-I-N-E-K is how he spells it. Start With Why. Now, I'm going to be honest. i this is probably the book that I maybe struggled the most with. Do I put it on the list or not? And it's not that it's not a great audio book. I think it's an excellent book. But I will say that I struggled with this when listening to it. But the main reason I struggled with it is because the book does focus a lot on management. And for me, not really planning on being in a management position or anything or not really thinking in those terms, it was just kind of like, okay, this has got a lot of good stuff. But it was also hard to kind of connect stuff because there are some things that it didn't, I don't know that it felt like it applied to me, but the principles behind it, this is why I recommend it. I, I, I emphasize and stress this so often about knowing your why, remembering your why. And a lot of this I got from, at least I put it into those terms, because of Simon Sinek. And it's such an important concept. And the delivery work, this this gig can be, it can be hard work. It can feel like a grind at times. And uh, there are times when you're thinking about your why as you are the what, that can make a huge difference. Because when you start with the why, I think you can go further, you can do more. And I think it sets you up to really explore your potential. And I think it motivates you to find ways that you can go so far beyond where you are now. I think it helps you prioritize. It helps you decide some of those things that are important. So if you're okay trying to kind of, you know, listen to a book on management when you're not in management, this could be a really good option for you. Another book that I want to talk about is the book is called Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. 
Now, the tagline in this book is a five-step plan for achieving your most important goals. I'm going to tell you right away, that turns me off a little bit. Um, I'm sitting here recommending books and then I'm telling you what I find wrong with them. <laughs> That's not a great way to go, right? But to me, I think life is a lot more than, uh, uh, than a systematic uh, five-step plan. That's me. But I'm also going to say that I'm not a great goal setter. I'm not great at, I've not always been great at looking ahead at where I want to be, where I want to go. And this book, I think, has helped me think in those terms. It helps set the stage. You know, I think last week's episode, I talked a little bit about my wife getting away, my wife and I getting away. And we talked a lot about what the last year was like, what we liked, what we didn't like, and where do we want the year to go? And and this book really kind of helped set the stage in my thinking to start thinking, oh, let's talk about this. And for those of us who are, you know, we're independent contractors, that makes us business owners. But even, heck, you know, just for us as people, guys, we've got to get beyond just getting things done as we go. And I think that there is something incredible. And this is why I felt like this was such a good book for me and I think could be for you is if we start getting intentional about where we want to go with our lives. What do we want to do? Who do we want to be? And once you've kind of dug into your why, like we talked about with Simon Sinek's book, then to start asking ourselves, so where do we want it? Where do we want that to lead us? And that's why I thought that this book is a good resource to help think through that question. Now, the next book that I want to recommend is Crush It by Gary Vaynerchuk. Now, you might also know him as Gary V. And the other book that you might think about is uh, he's got a book called Crushing It, which is really kind of a follow-up, and it's uh, kind of like a how how have people done with this whole idea. His subtitle in the book, I think, says it best. Why now is the time to cash in on your passions? And you can see the progression from... You know, the previous book that I mentioned, you know, we're talking about start with your why and the progression into this book. It, it kind of, I think, dovetails well with this, you know, your best year ever, too, because one of the best things that I think you can do is is to try and line yourself up with doing something that you love to do. Now, Gary Vee, he's, he's a guy that's kind of on a mission, as he says, he's He's out to become the best, the greatest entrepreneur at all time of all time. He's also made it his life goal that he wants to buy the New York Jets, and that means earning an awful lot of money to do it. The guy is a hard worker. Um, you know, he works sixteen hours a day or something like that. But people mistake that emphasis on that work as that kind of hustle above everything else mentality, and I don't think that that's that's not what I get from him. Because his point here is, if you love what you're doing, it's no longer hard work. And and, and that's the thing that I found is when I started to uh, get this different concept of time myself, and when I've gotten into a pattern of just things that I love doing, there's a lot of time between the website and delivery and the other things that I'm working on and my family, but it doesn't feel like it. You know what I mean? And so, you know, Gary is, he's an entrepreneur and a lot of what he's doing here is helping to kind of think in terms of being an entrepreneur, but, but I guess that's uh, where this is taking me here with this whole thing is that I know a lot of you are like me that maybe above anything else, the thing that we really love about this independent contractor gig is freedom. You set your own hours, you make your own decisions and we're business owners. Now, a lot of us, maybe we never intended to be, but that's what we are. Now, we're not necessarily full-blown entrepreneurs. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, even though I use Entree as entrepreneur in the name of this website. But, you know, ultimately, it's, you know, it's not a business that we've built up ourselves. It's kind of more like we're, we're doing this as part of doing something for somebody else. It's been kind of created by somebody else. So it's not really an entrepreneur thing. But I think for a lot of us, this can be a gateway drug to being a true entrepreneur, and and this is where Gary Vaynerchuk really comes in. The freedom of doing this is addictive. I got to say, I, I would not go over to an employee relationship and this delivery thing, even if it paid really well, mainly because of that freedom. And it might not be for everyone, but if you are thinking that you want to take this business owner thing a little bit further to something that has a much higher ceiling, I think this could be a good book for you. Now, along those lines, the next book is, it's a book that's called 48 Days to the Work You Love 
by Dan Miller. Now, the original edition of this book, it was a life changer for me. I had reached a point in my life, I just, I didn't have any fire for the telecom work that I was in at the time. It was okay. But honestly, it just, there was no sense of purpose. There was no feeling that I was really, maybe I think I wanted to do something a little more meaningful than, uh, you know, convincing people to put a certain type of phone on their desk, you know? And it was one of those moments where I was thinking, what do I want to do when I grow up? I mentioned, I, I told you, I think about that. And Dan's book, I think, really helped me dig deeper and just start to explore this whole idea of just branching out into the things that I love doing. And again, here's a common theme you see is, is doing this stuff that you really enjoy doing. And I, his book, I think more than anything, it helped set me off on a journey to really even discover what I love doing, because I think back at the time, I didn't know for sure. And so whether it's for you, it's about looking for a career or exploring the idea of being in business for yourself, I found that there's a lot of wisdom in this book. Now, I don't want to suggest that this delivery knife is not a great way to do things because I love doing this. I mean, heck, I've got a podcast and a website about it, right? But there's two things to think about here, guys. And one of those is that the way these gig companies work uh, they tend to lower the potential for the earnings as time goes on. And so there's a low ceiling, and I think it's going to get lower instead of higher. And that's something that you've got to be aware of. Now, you may still have a, you know, there may still be a lot of room before you actually hit that ceiling. So it's not saying get out. But the other is, I'm not sure the whole delivery model is sustainable. You know, with some of the legislation that's out there, they may be forced to hire employees, but uh, these companies are are tanking. And so... Things could change. The change could be forced on us. And so this is the kind of thing that I think is, it's a good thing to think about. Where do we go next? And that's why I think this is such a good book, because it it helps you kind of, if nothing else, plant the seed of, of where to go with that. And, and that can start to plant the seed of you trying to figure out the next books and the podcasts that you might do. One last book that I'm going to throw in here is uh, it's the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. I, I'll be honest, this this was one of the other ones that it was kind of like, okay, I, I it was a good book. It was very useful. There, there, there are parts where I'm kind of like, is it really applicable here or not? But I think there were a lot of things that are. So that's why I want to go ahead and throw it in here. Now, no, don't get the idea from me throwing this out there that I think that you can go out for just four hours a week on delivery. And, uh, and I don't think that uh, you could even say that Tim does just four hours a week because, heck, he's he's got a podcast that can go as long as three hours. And so, you know, it's not that he's saying you're only doing four hours a week. but And that's not ultimately the point of the book. The idea here, though, is – and here's here's the deal, too. Don't get from the title of that that uh, making a lot of money in four hours in the gig economy is realistic. You know, when you're trading time for money – it's just not realistic. But what it does do is it does help you think outside of that box of trading time for money. And it helps you, I think, think about a lot of things like becoming more efficient, taking better, you know, paying more attention to what's important to you. And you see that theme again, doing what you love, but also about, you know, making the best of your time then. And how can you really do a lot of things there? I think that this book actually help play a role in how that I saw that shift that I told you about and the way that I looked at my time when I'm driving and started thinking of how I could kind of roll it all together and become more of a big picture. And so what I really got out of it is when you boil it down, it comes down to finding out what matters to you and making the best of your time. And he's got some different takes on some things, but Tim does have a way of getting you thinking. So that's it. Seven books. And I know there are a lot more out there. I know there's some great stuff out there. I want to hear from you. What do you think? Have you got some books that you think would be a great suggestion? Now I'm working on creating a resource page and uh, we'll have a section on books. And so, you know, if I get a lot of good suggestions here from the audience, I want to kind of include a, a, a section of books that are suggested by by the listeners and by the audience and the website and everything like that. So I would love to get your suggestions on that. That wraps it up for this week. Now, Nick, now Courier Nation, I'm working on right now, 
um, getting uh, final details together on uh, getting somebody on to talk about taxes because that's important. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, we're going to be posting this on the 10th here. And if you're listening to this anytime on that, you're a few days away from doing your quarterly payment on taxes. And of course, everybody's starting to think about taxes because you're going to start getting your 1099s and all those different things. So it's, it's an important thing. Do you have questions about taxes that you want to answer? I would love to hear from you any of your specific questions on that so that, uh, you know, as we get a guest on or something to talk about that, we can throw those questions out for them. In the meantime, Courier Nation, let me ask you a question. Is this website helping you? Are, are the, the topics and the ideas that are shared on here helpful to you in your business? If so, please share this podcast, share the website, let people know. Because if we can be found by other people, that's more people that we can help just to take control of their business. And in the meantime, Courier Nation, I ask you and beg of you, take control yourself. Take control of your life and your business. Go out there and be the boss. Be the boss.